Hello YouTube. You like history? You like histories and mysteries and knives? Well, if so, you might find this video a little interesting. If you know me or you follow my channel and possibly have seen some of my older videos, you know that ever since I was a kid I've been fascinated with Jim Bowie and the Bowie knife. Everything about the knife and everything about the Bowie family. Um, and also that I attend a church when I'm back home that Reason Bowie, the inventor of the Bowie knife, he's buried behind the, in the cemetery behind the church I attend because it was donate, the property was donated by his sister, um, James Bowie and Reason's sister. Well, about two years ago, probably closer to a year and a half actually, I went to the grave site and I did a video and at that time um, I made a decision that I was going to commission a work to have the original Bowie knife that was associated with the sandbar fight across the banks from Natchez over near Vidalia. I was going to have that knife commissioned and I wanted to have a historically accurate reproduction made as close as possible so I spent almost a year doing as much research on it as I could possibly do and then I started researching blacksmiths who could actually forge a knife I didn't want one that was done with stock removal I wanted one actually forged and I finally um, found Daryl with primal connections He's the one that actually does my fire steels. And I talked to him and asked him if he would be interested in building the knife for me. And he asked me what all it involved, and I sent him all the information that I had on it. And he said, sure, he would do it. He'd be happy to do it. It was going to take him some time to get the materials and get everything together, but he'd do it. And he turned it around pretty quickly, within about six weeks. So this is a knife, but before I show it to you, um, just a little bit of history. And I'm sure that everybody has got a vision of a Bowie knife in their head right now. And most of it's based on The Iron Mistress. Um, the Iron Mistress was a movie that came out in 1952 with Alan Ladd. And if I'm not mistaken, that knife was built by Randall Knives of Orlando, Florida. If not, they do a reproduction of that knife, and they also do a Smithsonian knife. Um, so that's what most people associate the Bowie knife to look like. Big, honking knife with guards and wicket clip point. This knife's a little different. So here we're going to go into a little bit of history and the mystery, because there's not very much known about the knife. Very, very little to be concise. Um, well, we'll start from the beginning. And um, Jim Bowie, he was, he was born in Kentucky, and then his family moved to Louisiana. And he became famous in 1927 because of the sandbar fight. The sandbar fight is something that's fascinated me all of my life, ever since I first heard about it as a kid because it basically happened in, on my back doorstep where I grew up. And just I'm just fascinated with the history of, of, you know, of Mississippi and Louisiana, where I'm from. Um, well, Bowie had a big falling out with this sheriff of um, Rapides Parish. His name was Morse Wright. And there's a lot of politics involved because there's two political factions going on at the time. And Wright was trying to get reelected, and Bowie was on the opposite side. And one day they walked into, um, I think it was possibly a bar. I'm not exactly sure where they walked in. And um, so Bowie and Wright run into each other. They have an argument. Wright pulls out a gun and shoots Bowie. And at that time, all they had was single shot pistols and it, they also weren't very dependable 
So after Bowie got shot, he decided from now on and then on, he was going to carry a knife on his person. Um, his brother, Reason, they own, well, both of them together, they had a um, plantation. And he contacted um, Let's see back up again. Okay, anyway. They had a blacksmith on their on their plantation. His name was Jesse Clift. This is Jesse Cl a reproduction of Jesse Clift's knife. And what I'm about to tell you now is all that's actually known about the knife. Um I'm reading off the of notes real here because I don't want to I'm trying to make this as brief as possible, but um, historically, the Bowie knife was its not a single design. It was a series of knives improved over several years by Jim and his brother Reason, and the earliest knife was made by Jesse Clift by his you know, request of his brother Reason. And the blade, per quote from Reason, was nine and a half inches long quarter inch thick and one and a half inches wide. It was straight back, described by most witnesses as a large butcher knife and having no clip point nor hand guard and was simply riveted with an oak scaled handle and was made from an old file. Well, what I did was when I contacted Daryl, I sent him some pictures that other people had done research earlier and sent him the knife. And this is it. It is a beautiful friggin' knife. I mean, I was just dumbstruck when I saw it. Um, of course, there's, I don't think there was any history on the, the sheath at all, but he did just a fantastic job on the sheath. A lot of times I think they just tuck these down in their belts. I don't even know if they were attached to their belts. I'm not, I, I, I don't know. But he did, Daryl did an excellent job on this sheet. And this is the knife. And I've measured it. And he is bang on with all the dimensions. And if you look on um, one of the sites that I've got a, I had an idea of the knife. Daryl just did an excellent job even down to the rivets. I wanted it to be as rusticated as possible because I figured on a plantation that it would have been pretty rough to begin with. And this was just the first knife of its type made. So I didn't know if it would be polished or not. Plus I like to rusticate it look. And you can see the file marks on here. It's just awesome, awesome knife. No clip point, straight back, quarter inch thick. It is a monster. And razor hair popping sharp. Just awesome oak handles, fit it well, heavy, and this knife is only made for one thing, it's not made for skin and deer. Just a brief history on the sandbar fight and why I find it so fascinating. I've already told you about Bowie and um, Major Norris, you know, getting in an argument, and um, later on these factions, they um, they got in ev even more arguments. And I'm just going to read this real quick because um, it's more concise and to the point. But on Wednesday, September 19th, 
1827 at midday, James Bowie and Major Norris Wright attended a duel on the sandbar outside of Natchez, Mississippi. Bowie supported duelist Samuel Levi Wells III, while White Wright favored Dr. Thomas Harris Maddox, both of Alexandria. The duel was conducted by formal rules in time, at the time, with a lengthy, lengthy delay between exchanges of fire. The duel was attended by six participants only by mutual prior agreement, and the supporters of both parties and local witnesses were distant, distant from the duel and separate. At the conclusion of the duel, because they, they had both fired two shots each, and neither one of them was injured, they started walking back to their horses. At the conclusion of the duel, the party of six participated in a celebration of survival. They walked toward the remaining Maddox part um, partisans became, because no participant of the duel had a violent relationship with that group. So they're walking back and all of a sudden um, these other men pull up. Crane carried a loaded pistol in each hand. The dual participants were intercepted by the remaining Wells partitions. Crane faced three additional armed men seeing, seen from the distance. The remaining Maddox partitions, partitions began running forward to join the group. Cunning, who had previously fought with Crane, is recorded as, as having said, Colonel Crane, this is a good time to settle our differences. Crane fired Miss Cunny, but striking Bowie in the hip and knocking him to the ground. Cunny and Crane then exchanged fire with Crane sustaining a flesh wound in the arm and Cunny dying from the shot in his chest. Bowie rose to his feet, drew his knife and charged at Crane who struck him so hard with an empty pistol on the head that the pistol broke and sent Bowie to his knees. Wright appeared, drew a pistol and shot at the falling Bowie. He missed him. Wright then drew his sword cane and stabbed Bowie in the chest, but the thin blade was deflected by the sternum. As Wright attempted to pull the blade free, Bowie reached up, grabbed his shirt, pulled him down on the point of his Bowie knife and guttered him. Wright quickly died and Bowie was shot again and stabbed by another member of the group. As Bowie stood, both Blanchard brothers fired at him and he was struck once in the arm. Bowie spun and cut off part of Alfred's forearm. Carey fired a second shot at Bowie but missed. The Blanchard brothers fled and Alfred was shot through the arm by Jefferson Wells while Carey was shot at by Major McWhorter without effect. The brief 90-second sprawl left Samuel Cunning, Norris Wright, and Norris Wright dead, Alfred Blanchard and Jim Bowie badly wounded. The unarmed Dr. Den Denny was shot in the finger and the thigh. Others have reported minor in in injuries. Crane claimed that the bullet grazed his skin at the time. Um, interesting little note. Even though Crane and Bowie had fought, Crane helped carry Bowie away with, the, with Bowie recorded as, as having said, Colonel Crane, I do not think under the circumstances you ought to have shot me. <laughs> One doctor reputedly said that how he, Bowie, lived is a mystery to me, but he lived. James Bowie was seriously wounded. One account says he was shot twice with seven wounds. And another one said he was shot three times with four stabs, and it took him months to recover. There's a video on YouTube by Fat River, the Fat River Channel, about the Sandbar Duel, part one and two. Excellent. Does it much better than I did with reading. Um, but, you know, this is about the knife, and this is just one beautiful piece of work that Daryl did for me. And this is just probably the most accurate original Bowie knife that I have been able to come up with. If you want to collect Bowies, there's like 18 Bowies that it would take you to complete a collection. Because Jim and his brother Reason both did different designs and had knives made and they gave a lot of them away. And they evolved over the years more becoming more like their original iron mistress but this is mine and i'm extremely proud of it it's not something i'm going to use 
it's only got one intended purpose and I'm not going to do that with this <laughs> so it's going to sit on a shelf or possibly um, some type of display because you know my quest for Bowie knives is not over um, but right now this is my baby I'm extremely proud of it and I'm just chuffed to bits with it I mean it's just gorgeous Daryl just did a superb job on this I could not have asked for anything better I'm gonna leave um, the links to Fat River Channel um, which is really really a good documentation and portrayal of the sandbar fight I'm gonna leave Daryl at Promwell Connections I'm gonna leave his um, information and anybody else that's interested in this I'll be more than happy to share anything that I know about the Bowie, the Bowie families or the Bowie knives and forward them any information that I can and I already have but hope you enjoyed this it has been a great research project and the more that you find out about the buoys the more you find out that you don't know very much because the whole buoy family is just a mystery and a fascinating fascinating history to research so if you're interested, go check it out. But I thank you for um, watching. And until next time, take care.